Hi, everyone. I'm Frank Malico, news anchor and reporter here for Fox in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, my guest is recently returned from India. Uh, she was raised in India, now works here in the States, got the virus in India, had to quarantine, finally got back home now two weeks. Let's say hi to Shreya Kamdar. Hi, Shreya. Hi, Frank. How are Good you doing? to have you with us. Uh, well, you've seen it firsthand, what's going on in India. Uh, uh, the numbers actually have gone down the last couple of days, which is uh, great news, but still over 400,000 new cases a day, over 4,000 deaths. Are we getting the full picture? It's awful there right now, but how bad is it in your eyes? You just came home. So um, thank you for that question, um, Frank. Honestly, um, the condition there is a lot worse um, than you can see or we can imagine. Um, Every time you connect with someone or speak to someone every day, you hear so much negativity. Um, we're losing loved ones and um, it's so widespread that uh, eventually, you know, if you talk to someone, they know of three to four people who have either had it or are in the hospital um, fighting it. Right. And for me personally, um, I lost uh, a couple of school teachers. Um, that got tested for coronavirus and um, unfortunately lost the battle um, to it. So uh, that was that was a really personal loss for all of us. And um, a lot of my school friends as well, um, you know, who have parents and friends kind of battling. Um, one of my closest friends, um, you know, kind of taking you back to the reality um, that makes you realize how bad it's hit everyone is because I had a close friend who had a, uh, you know, who had a parent kind of um, got a heart attack and was um, suffering and they needed a bed. He was not positive with COVID, but because the hospitals and resources are so over full and um, there's no way that they're able to kind of give assistance to anyone, even if they're not positive, they had to wait a couple hours. And he had a major heart attack and he's just sitting outside um, kind of waiting, right? To, to get assistance, to be able to uh, get the medication he needs. And that kind of really in the broad picture of things gives you the reality that we are hit by something we have no idea how to handle. And um, I guess, you know, I was, I was reading the other day and it really brings things to perspective. When the world um, really came to it and we were hit by something, the only thing we were fighting for was air to breathe, right? Everyone is just wanting um, oxygen, wanting the ability to really get their loved ones um, hospital beds. Um, now talking about you know, this, the situation as is. Um, we're at a loss of resources, not in just the sense of, um, you know, oxygen cylinders or ventilators, um, but, you know, um, banquet halls and hotels are being converted to hospitals. Um, there are like ambulances that are turned into emergency rooms because there's just not enough space and there's just not enough um, ability for people to get the um, attention they need. Um, each hospital bed in certain countries or certain cities have two, um, uh, two patients on each bed getting their um, medication. And so that kind of really puts things in perspective of when you say 400,000 cases, how are we really handling that? And, and honestly, that number is, is, could be a lot higher um, than what we can see. Really? You think so? I mean, we see video of mass cremations in the streets of India. Is that that's really going on? It's that bad? Yes. Um, so I was talking to a friend the other day and um, in cities like Bangalore, they have to in, in, in parts where they haven't seen three or four bodies being cremated in a day. Now they're doing eight at a time. Right. Because there's so many dead bodies that they're not, they don't even have enough resources to be able to um, cremate them in, in the religious way that they did before. So. Well, you, you caught the virus while you were back home. Uh, talk about that and the protocol that you had to go through um, to get well and get back to the United States. Yeah. Um, so I tested, I was supposed to fly back um, to the United States first week of April. And three days before my flight, I um, tested positive. 
um, with COVID. And the one good thing with how um, India is really managing that situation is that they have a centralized um, testing system. So it's RT-PCR tests. And every time um, someone tests positive with uh, the RT-PCR, uh, the government finds out. So it's not only me being positive and being um, quarantined in my room, but um, so is my house and so is my apartment building. Um, they kind of want to make sure that um, if there's a positive patient, three or four, they're isolating that location so that no one else um, gets prone to it. Um, for me personally, I uh, did have mild symptoms. Um, I had headache, fever, my oxygen did drop, um, but you know, thankfully, I did not need uh, oxygen cylinders or the hospital. And I guess my major concern was my family that was outside. Um, and I didn't want to pass it out to someone um, who could have had um, worse symptoms. What is the lockdown like in India? Are people, can you shop? Can you travel? What can you, what can you do? N Honestly, um, so how it began was no one, so for, from January up until March, um, things, that, things looked a lot better. Um, there was a lot more hope and so things had slowly started to open up. Um, but I guess, you know, end of March, first week of April, once the uh, new variant hit, no one knew um, what had hit us and it was spreading a lot more faster um, than we were anticipating. And so it, it slowly began, the lockdown slowly began with just a couple um, restrictions and you know you were, you were able to do your essential work and come back home. But eventually in like a couple of days, they had to really, really push down and everything was shut. So currently um, general stores or you know, grocery stores are open just for two hours or so. And um, you, you pretty much want to make sure everything gets home delivered to you. You don't want to step out because it's spreading so much, anyone and everything could have it. You could get it by touching something or by talking to someone. Like you just, so you, you got to be careful. How about vaccinations? Uh, uh, is there a supply of those in the country of some 1.3 billion? I know you were vaccinated here in the States. And where do they get their vaccine from? Because I understand it's not Moderna or Pfizer, right? Yes, it's not. So um, currently they have Covaxin um, and they, they have been able to kind of um, ramp up the production of the vaccines that they're getting. There are two different types. Um, only recently did they open up to ages 18 and above, but you got to understand that with 1.8 billion people, not everyone's going to be able to get it. Um, it's it's not going to be overnight. It's not going to be a couple months. It's going to be a lot longer. And so right now they've opened up a website kind of to keep it centralized, but um, kind of the, the back, you know, backside story of it is that they just have 500 slots a day um, or so that open up and you, it's kind of a lucky draw. If you hit it, you hit it, you get a chance to get the vaccine. If not, you might have to wait a couple of days uh, to, to kind of make the cut and be able to uh, get that vaccine. So they are, what they did really well was that with the age groups that are more susceptible to the virus, they made sure they were getting vaccinated a lot more quickly. But with the new variant that's hitting, it's not just hitting the older people, but um, it's also hitting the younger generation. And a lot of deaths have happened in the you know 26 to 35 age group as well. How difficult was it for you to get back to the United States after contracting the virus and uh, testing negative enough to fly back. Was, was it very difficult? It was. So with the new, uh, you know, when I got tested positive, I, there was no way to know if I would test negative in, you know, in two weeks, in three weeks, there are people I know that, you know, on the 21st day of quarantine are so positive. Um, so there was no way for me to anticipate that. And so, what, what I kind of used as a strategy was just take, playing it by the ear. And when I kind of tested negative on the 14th day, I decided that I was going to book a ticket uh, to fly back. But turns out that I, you know, I had it for the 5th of May. And um, a week, like a week before flying out, we realized that uh, a lot of the countries are closing down borders. 
uh, to India and to Indian uh, travelers. And it kind of put everyone in a panic situation. Everyone was moving their flights. There were no seats available. Um, the prices of tickets went up to $6,000. It, oh. was, it was all over the place. And um, I got lucky enough to kind of jump onto a plane earlier and make it back. Um, but yeah, even though coming back, they had very strict rules. You kind of had to make sure you were negative um, a week before, you were negative before you boarded the flight. And they also wanted you to get tested when you came back, just to make sure um, you know, you weren't bringing that new variant into the country or kind of being more uh, particular about that. So what what was that flight like? Were you looking at people on the plane going, wow, I mean, out of India, what, what, what was that flight like? So Frank, honestly, that flight was full. Everybody was trying to get out of um, India and make it back, whoever could right, take that flight, because somewhere we all knew that the, the rate at which the viruses were spreading and, um, you know, the, the vast amount of repercussions we were facing, everyone just wanted to get out, and that flight was, um, was full, and it was, it, was, it was intimidating to know that it could be anyone that could have, that could be positive and could get, give it to all of us, but um, it was, it was nerve-wracking. I bet. And getting back to the U.S., were you, uh, how thankful were you to get back home here? It was, it was a sigh of relief. Um, you know, my heart goes back out to India. I am Indian and um, I'm very concerned about my family and friends that are back there. But the condition here is a lot better. Um, you know, we've been through our worst and, um, you know, India is now going through it, but it feels so much better to be able to breathe the fresh air and really step out instead of having to just quarantine. So. Yeah. Is there hope in your heart? You've seen uh, India at its worst uh, uh, two or three weeks back. Uh, can they get through this? So, you know, what's really beautiful um, and why it really instills hope in my heart um, when I look, look to it and I know we'll get through it, I know we'll get come back stronger, is because I hear of stories where, you know, recently there was an 85 year old man um, who, you know, was desperate for oxygen and he was, um, he, he knew he could lose his life if that's not something he got. So his family was waiting in line to get admitted to the hospital. And there was this other lady who was crying um, for her husband who was 40 years old, who was not getting a hospital bed. And she knew that her husband would, you know, die if he didn't get the attention. The 85 year old man looked at his daughter and actually said, I've lived my life. He needs it more than me. He has, he has like a, you know, younger family who needs more attention. So I'm giving up my bed to give it to him. Like that, I, I honestly, it's unheard of. He did pass away. Um, and I'm really sorry to say that he did, uh, you know, lose the battle to uh, COVID. But I feel like the way he lost it is, 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 so, is so strong and so beautiful to, to, want to help someone when you need it yourself. I think that really makes me feel um, that we'll come back. We'll, we'll be strong again. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a, it's a sad but beautiful story. And I imagine it's one of hundreds of thousands that are uh, going on. Um, does your uh, phone blow up every day? I mean, are you on the phone constantly or the computer? Yes, so um, it is honestly, it it's a, taxes and takes a toll on my mental health as well. Just every time I talk to someone back home, they tell me of someone um, who's tested positive or who's lost their um, battle to COVID. And it's, there's this constant fear, almost as if like everyone's gonna get it at some point. Um, just hopefully it doesn't hit everyone as bad um, because it's so widespread that you, you can't really, everything you do, could still lead you to getting COVID. Because in my case, I had fully quarantined, um, taken all precautions, and I still tested positive. No, no idea from where I got it. So it's, it's kind of a lingering always fear that uh, I hope everyone back home is safe. Yeah. Is, is there any way we can help back here in the States? I would urge everyone um, to keep us in your prayers. 
um, you know, just think out to us and in, in any way that you could donate, whether it's um, for oxygen cylinders, whatever your heart goes out for, um, it would be really appreciated. I know we need it. I know um, our country's crying for it right now and it would, anything small would, would make a huge difference. Okay, so. Very good. Well, we're glad you're safe. We're glad you're back here in the States. Uh, continue good health and, uh, and blessings uh, to your family and everyone in India. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, Frank, that means a lot. All right, that's Shreya Kamdar. Uh, lives here in the States, but uh, was raised in India. It's got a lot of family back there. I'm Frank Malikot. If you'd like more information about this story, go to newsnowfox.com. Have a good day, everybody.